This is R2D Tech and today we're going to have a look at some of the updates that Tesla have made specifically to their Model S and X lineup, so stay tuned. In general, over the past few years, Tesla haven't really done any major upgrades to the Model S or X, but that's all about to change in the next month or so because they're releasing some really cool new updates to these two vehicles. On the Model S, there hasn't been a major update to the exterior of the vehicle, but the bulk of the update has been on the interior. Just looking at the updated Tesla website, you can see straight away that the Model S has a slight change to the exterior. Even though the main shape is pretty much the same, they did actually have chrome around the windows and door handles before, which I personally didn't really like. And you can see now that they've changed it for this black, I think it's matte black color, which is actually pretty cool. And lots of people would actually buy the Model S in the past and get it custom wrapped like this just because it looks a lot more sporty. I totally agree. So even though it's not the largest of updates, it's definitely one which I think was worth making. Now let's take a look into the interior, which is the most exciting part. Looking at this image of the front section of the interior, you can see straight away that this is where most of the updates been made. So the steering wheel is completely different. You've got that horizontal display and you've also got some other cool features which we'll get onto. Let's start with that steering wheel though. So you can see straight away, it's definitely not your typical shape. So this is actually a yoke design, which is more commonly found in racing cars or like Formula One cars. I think it looks really sporty. I'm really happy they made this change. I do have a bit of a concern in terms of practicality though, as cool as it might look, just because when you're doing really slow maneuvers, maybe like parking, where you're turning the wheel around a lot, it is kind of nice to have that extra area to grip onto. It just makes the whole process a lot easier. So I'm not sure what they're doing to make that easier on this design, but I'm sure they're doing something. Looking slightly closer at that image though, particularly behind the steering wheel, you'll see there's no paddles or anything like that, which means no indicators, no windscreen wipers, no gear shifting, so like park reverse. Nothing like that, which is very unusual, even for a Tesla. So you'll see that they've actually changed the format of these. So instead of being in paddle format, they've actually put them on the face of the steering wheel itself as buttons. At least I hope they're buttons. You can't really tell from the image. They could be touch controls, but I'm really hoping they're buttons because these are quite important functions. So you can see on the left face, you've got the indicators. You've also got the headlight button. And then on the right face, you've got the horn, washing the windscreen and voice control. And I believe that the main control for the windscreen wipers in terms of setting is still on the main display. Looking at that main display, you can clearly see the main difference, which is that it's now horizontal, kind of like in the Model 3, whereas in the past on the Model S, it was a vertical display. I certainly think it's better in this format. It just seems a lot more user friendly. Although even though like in the Model 3, it's now a horizontal display, it does seem different aesthetically in the sense that it seems to be more part of the dash or in, in the Model 3, it's clear that it's kind of like a separate tablet. Other than that change, which I really welcome, the display will be pretty much the same in terms of software. Apart from they've added more memory to the actual computing system, so that it doesn't crash because they, I believe they might have had to do a recall on some models. Moving slightly left of that main display, you'll notice that they've also updated the display behind the steering wheel, or I guess we should say above the steering wheel now that there's no top section to it. It definitely seems to be slightly larger than the display they had before. It's hard to tell because they could just be really large black bezels, but that's what it appears to be at least. That's always a useful display to have for things like navigation and maybe even music control. The center console does seem to be a bit larger than it was before, so perhaps there'll be more storage. But one thing which definitely catches my eye is that pair of wireless chargers over there as well, which is definitely a cool addition to have, especially in 2021 where most phones do have wireless charging. I also like the fact that it's slightly inclined and almost vertical as opposed to just a horizontal wireless charging pad because it does mean that you can prop it up there and perhaps see something that pops up on your screen without having to look all the way down. Looking at the back of the vehicle, which also looks really nicely updated, 
One thing that catches my eye straight away is that the stowable armrest also has a pair of wireless chargers, which is a really nice add-on. The seats also do look really nice and comfortable and that material looks really nice as well. Another pretty major update that you might notice is that there is also a display on the back here, which I guess you could probably use to climate control the vehicle but it will also be used for gaming by any passengers in the back or maybe even viewing content. So you can actually connect a wireless remote controller to this and use it for gaming, which is pretty cool. One thing that I will say though, is that perhaps having it at that low height, you might get some pain in your neck and maybe even car sickness if you're always looking down for gaming. It would have been perhaps a better decision to have it on the back of the seats like in most vehicles that have screens at the back, but I guess it's worth a try and it might not even be a problem. Also, one thing which I almost forgot to mention is that on the front, you've now got that bar style aircon system, like in the Model 3, which is really nice. So you can actually customize exactly where the air is going pretty much to any extent, which could be quite useful. The audio system also looks really impressive with 22 speakers. I, mean, I don't know if that's entirely necessary, but it's definitely cool to have. But one thing that really excites me is that they seem to be using some sort of noise cancellation technology. And they say that it's active noise cancellation, which is probably the key word here. So perhaps Tesla aren't the best in terms of actual body build quality. So their seals won't be the very best, like in some more experienced car manufacturers. So it seems they've taken the software path and they're gonna create basically anti-noise inside the vehicle to counteract any noise outside and create that active noise cancellation. And that should make the interior of the cabin almost completely silent to outside noises. I think that's a pretty bold and really great thing to do inside a vehicle because road noise can be quite annoying, especially on the motorway. And we've seen this technology a lot in headphones like the Bose Quiet Comforts. I certainly didn't expect it to come to cars, but I definitely welcome the idea. The back of the car being a sedan is quite spacious in terms of how much you can store, especially if you drop those back two seats down, you can pretty much fit a bicycle in there, just like in the photo. Enough of that though, let's look at the actual performance which has been upgraded and it's absolutely insane and the price that goes along with that, of course. So let's switch that on to purchase price so there's no misleading going on. So the long range model is the cheapest of the bunch, around $80,000 as a starting price. It's definitely not the fastest in terms of zero to 60 time. 3.1 seconds though is still pretty impressive. It is the cheapest of the lot though, so it's not meant to be the best spec. Being the long range model, where it really shines is range, so it gets 412 miles of range, and that is very impressive for an electric car, when lots of the other electric cars, like the Porsche Taycan and some other models from BMW, still struggle to get around 300 miles of range. Next up is the Plaid Edition, which is the next most expensive at around $120,000. These are definitely very expensive vehicles, not something I could see myself getting anytime soon, to be honest. But you do get quite impressive specs for that price. So zero to 60 in 1.99 seconds. That is pretty much the most insane zero to 60 spec I've ever seen on a road vehicle. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that's the fastest road vehicle zero to 60 time. I'd probably pass out accelerating at that speed, but I guess it's good to know that you could. The range is slightly less impressive compared to the long range model, but still pretty impressive at 390 miles. That should definitely get the job done in most scenarios. Now next up is the Plaid Plus, which won't be released until later on, I think 2021 or end of 2021 is what they were quoting. And that's because there definitely seems to be some new battery technology that they're working on here to get 512 miles of range, which is unreal for any car, let alone an electric car. That would really be ideal for a road trip or anything like that, where you just need to get from A to B without making too many stops. Despite having the best battery out of all of the options, the zero to 60 time is even better than the last option. It's less than 1.99 seconds 
which is absolutely unreal. I don't even know what to say at this point. The colors are pretty much the standard ones which we're used to. If you want the pearl white, then you don't have to pay any extra, but if you want any of the other ones, you'll pay, I think, $1,500 more, and the red is the most expensive. I think it's another $2,500. Now, it's definitely worth mentioning the new wheels because I always think the wheels on Teslas make quite a big difference in terms of appearance. So they've got two options here. I definitely will say that I don't like the base option that much. Those are 19 inch Tempest wheels. They definitely do look nice overall. I just personally don't think they look that good. I would definitely prefer to get those 21 inch Arachnid wheels, which granted are $4,500 more, which is a lot to pay for an upgrade to the wheels. They do look very sporty and pretty stealth as well. I'm sure you wouldn't be disappointed if you got those wheels. The interior colors are black, white, and cream. Now the black does come included in the cost, but if you want the white or cream, you have to pay an extra $2,000. I personally think the white is the best option. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about is how it holds up over time in terms of decolorization. If you want the safest option, that's probably black, but personally, I'd probably go with the white. So those were the main upgrades to the Tesla Model S, and the Tesla Model X upgrades are very similar. You can see those on the website if you want. I think they've done a great job here, and I'd really like to take one of these out for a test drive, even though I know I'm not getting one anytime soon. That's it for this week, though. If you liked the video, then please leave a thumbs up, and if you loved it and you wanna see more content like this in the future, then smash that subscribe button and notification bell below.